Today we're going to talk about Bill 4769, which was just signed into law. It's now a law in New Jersey. Governor Murphy signed it on the 22nd of December, I believe. It, was, it passed both houses on the 19th, and less than three days later, he signed it into law. This law affects the firearms fees as well as the application process, and a big part of this law is the carry permits or permits to carry holders in the state of New Jersey because there are so many restrictions on this law. That's why it's also called the concealed carry law. So Governor Murphy and the anti-gun politicians have decided that they need to do this in order to protect the citizens of New Jersey. Let's get into it. I'm going to list the main restrictions here and you're going to see them on the screen and I urge you, I'm going to put a link to the law uh, or the bill before it was signed into law, I urge you to read it in its entirety to see all these places that you can't carry in, but I'm just going to highlight a few of them. They break, basically break it down into three areas. The first is high density locations, which includes entertainment venues, stadiums, arenas, amusement parks, casinos, racetracks, and publicly owned libraries and museums. Use sporting events and other recreational facilities such as public parks, beaches, and playgrounds, bars, restaurants where alcohol is served, this is an important one, and any other location that serves alcohol on the premises for c consumption. I have to stop and just tell you, this is absurd to me. So, t so a lot of diners in New Jersey have liquor licenses. They can serve wine, beer, drinks. Some of them even have bars. So you're telling me that I can't go to a diner have lunch or dinner with my family because the person next to me might be having a glass of wine or a beer or or maybe they're not maybe no one at the time is even consuming alcohol but the fact that the that the diner which is a restaurant can serve alcohol so that means you're restricted from carrying your firearm in a diner because they can serve alcohol airports and public transportation hubs the next area main area is locations in vulnerable populations so they include schools colleges universities daycare child care long-term facilities nursing homes correctional facilities juvenile justice facilities halfway houses and homeless shelters and the last Main area is locations with government and First Amendment activity, polling places, courthouses, law enforcement sta uh, stations and offices, government buildings and locations with government meetings, demonstrations, protests, and licensed public gatherings. So you can have your First Amendment right not taken away from you by protesting, having a public gathering, but you can exercise your Second Amendment where you can exercise your First Amendment. Makes a lot of sense. Here's a good one. This is this is how absurd this law is. Parts of it anyway. Firearms cannot be carried on private property, including homes, businesses, stores, and houses of worship, unless the property owner expressly communicates permission through express consent or specific signage. So I read that there's an estimated 3.3 million renters in the state of New Jersey. So I guess that means if you rent your house and you don't have express permission from your landlord or your property owner that you're breaking the law. You're, you're in violation of this law unless the property owner has said to you, yeah, you can carry your firearm on my property that you rent from me. That's how absurd this is. So the only exception to these rules are for law enforcement officers or private security. So I'm going to do a video regarding uh, retired law enforcement carrying under the RPO, New Jersey RPO, and also under LEOSA. So I urge you to, if you're a retired law enforcement officer in the state of New Jersey, I urge you to watch that video. That'll be posted soon, and it's going to focus on the restrictions. Now, I, I must say that... The New Jersey RPO has less restrictions than carrying under LEOSA under this new law. As far as the permitting process for obtaining a permit to carry, so instead of providing three references or endorsements, now you must provide four and they can't be blood related. So they have to be non-related persons. They cannot be family members in any way, shape or form. The endorsers and the applicant so you yourself, you're the applicant, and your four people that are endorsing you must be interviewed now by law enforcement to determine whether you, or through interviewing your endorsements, uh, are likely to engage in any conduct that would result in the harm of others or yourself. And also with this new law, social media posts can be used as well in determining your eligibility to obtain a, a permit to carry a firearm.
This next one's a big one, and I believe it's the first in the nation. All permit to carry holders in New Jersey are required to maintain and provide proof of liability insurance with coverage for at least $300,000 on account of injury, death, or damage to property arising out of the ownership, maintenance, and operation or use of a firearm. So here's, here's my little sidebar on this. If you want to get your own liability insurance, that's up to you. Probably not a bad idea, but to mandate it by law, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And I must say, as a sidebar on this, good luck in getting liability insurance in the state of New Jersey because Governor Murphy signed a, into law a couple of years back a law banning insurance companies from providing liability insurance to gun owners in New Jersey. So he's since removed that restriction, I believe, or signed an order canceling it. But to this date, I don't think any insurance carrier has come back to New Jersey to offer liability insurance for firearms or carrying a firearm. If anybody knows any differently, please let me know. Put a comment for everyone to see. But as far as I know, no one's offering it again in New Jersey, thanks to Governor Murphy. But this law requires that you have it. All the restrictions in this law are just to make it so difficult for anyone to legally carry a firearm in New Jersey. You're just going to say, why bother? Because if you can't, if you can meet all the other requirements of this law, and but you can't get liability insurance, you're in violation of the law. So I think that's all part of the plan here, the master plan. Let's make it as, di it was already way difficult. And now they made it even more difficult, if not impossible, for some people to meet all the requirements of this law, especially with this liability insurance requirement. With this law comes increases in fees. Now, mind you, the fees have not risen in decades in New Jersey. So, permit to purchase a handgun went from $2 to $25. Firearms purchaser ID went from $5 to $50. Dealer's fees cannot exceed $70. It was $25. Permit to carry application fee is now $200 under this new law. County clerk where the permits issued was $20 fee. Now it's $50. Your firearms ID card issued after the, the effective date of this law will expire after 10 years. So you have to renew it after 10 years. And all new firearms ID cards that are issued have a color photo and some device or capability to link the card holder with their fingerprints. Anyone issued a firearms ID card prior to the effective date of this law is not subject to an expiration date or the requirements with the photo and linking it to their fingerprints. Now required training is also part of this law. So to, to in order to obtain a uh, firearms purchaser ID card or a permit to purchase a handgun, after the effective date of this law, it doesn't apply to anybody who already has one existing. You have to, within four years prior to the date of the application, complete a course of instruction approved by the Superintendent of State Police on the lawful safe and handling and storage of firearms. You only need to do this one time to get either one. So if you're applying for an ID card, you only need to do it once. If you're applying for a permit to purchase a handgun, once. And once you have it, you're good. So if you don't apply for another permit to purchase a handgun for three years, you don't have to do the safety course again. Only have to do it one time. There are exceptions to the training. If you're law enforcement or retired law enforcement and you've uh, completed requirements of NJS 2C39-6, like most law enforcement are do in the state of New Jersey, or if you are a veteran of the U.S. Armed Forces and you are honorably discharged and you have received substantially equivalent training in firearms, you do not have to complete the required training. With this new law, all permits to carry issued are for concealed carry only. So no more option of open carry. Before they were issued, it was open or concealed. It was your choice. This new law requires that you carry concealed only. Now the exception would be is if you work in armed security or an armored car employee, which that would be specified, I'm guessing, on your permit. Under restrictions, you would have it noted that you could carry openly as well. But everyone else has to carry concealed with this new law. In addition, they talk about the holster and how it has to meet minimum requirements. It has to have, like, for example, a minimum of a thumb strap. And when the firearm is seated in the holster, 
the trigger to be covered completely. You can't access the trigger while it's in the holster and the holster has to be secured on your body to keep the firearm in the same place. I'm going to do a video on everyday carry in which I'll talk about which firearm I use to carry with and which holster, holster options and choices and especially with this new law my suggestions on what to do. So stay tuned for that video on everyday carry regarding firearms. One of the good things in my opinion they have come out of this law is that the permits to carry are now going to be issued by the chief of police or the superintendent of state police. So no more superior court judge. So there's no waiting for the police department to do their whole background investigation, everything they need to do. And then they submit the whole packet up to the court. And then the judge has to get it with his or her docket and with all the other cases they're hearing and now you have to wait for the judge to issue an order so no there aren't going to be any more court orders this is going to be issued by the police department you're either your chief of police or the superintendent of state police it also designates that the superintendent of state police will establish a tr an acceptable training program for safe handling and storage and of the firearms in order to complete prior to being issued a permit to carry and the training is going to include, of course, uh, target shooting qualification at a range. It's going to be in conjunction with the police training commission on, and also it will include justification on the use of force under state law, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It will probably be some online training in person as well as at the range. There's also a new part of this law, which is new. Uh, the, the whole law is new, but some of the things that they've put down or codified in this law have been mentioned in other laws. But this law includes what they call a safe carry. The holder of the permit to carry shall not use or consume alcohol, a cannabis item, or a controlled substance while carrying a handgun. Be under the influence of alcohol, cannabis, or a controlled substance while carrying a handgun. Carry a handgun in public outside of a holster or carry a handgun in public in a holster that does not meet the requirements of what I mentioned before. Carry more, no more than two firearms under your control at any one time or engage in any unjustified display of a handgun. Also, this is something new with this law that if you have a permit to carry and you're carrying a handgun that you're issued under 2C58-4, if you're stopped or detained by law enforcement while carrying a handgun in public, you shall immediately disclose to the law enforcement officer that you are carrying a handgun. I've mentioned this in previous videos that I think it's not a bad idea to mention it if you get stopped just in the interest of you're legally carrying a firearm and you no surprises, you were not required to disclose when you were asked a question, hey, are you carrying a handgun? Not necessarily required to answer that, right? You don't really have to answer any questions if you don't want to. And if the police have probable cause or articulable suspicion to pat you down or to search you, probable cause to search you, they're going to do it and they're going to find it anyway. If they're just randomly asking people that are walking in a gun-free zone, for example, hey, are you carrying a firearm, are you carrying a handgun? You don't necessarily have to answer. Now, according to this law, you do. If you're stopped or detained, it says if you're stopped or detained by law enforcement and you need to disclose to them, according to this law, you don't even have to be asked. You just have to tell them. If they stop you and ask you about something with your car, according to this law, the way I read it, you need to disclose to them, hey, by the way, I'm carrying a handgun. I have a permit to carry, but I'm carrying a handgun. In addition to advising the police officer you're carrying a handgun, you need to show them your permit to carry. You also need to show them within a reasonable amount of time your proof of liability insurance. And it goes on to say that if you don't have any insurance, that's a fourth degree crime in New Jersey. If you don't, if you're carrying in any restricted area, which there are a lot, it's a third degree crime to knowingly carry in a restricted area. And of course, the exceptions to this are active or retired law enforcement. And I'll get into that in another video. So stay tuned for that. So I urge you folks to read this law thoroughly. And I'll put links to it again in the description because there are a lot of restrictions and a lot of places where you could get jammed up. And I just, I really, it's already being challenged and I'm, and stay tuned for that video on the lawsuit. Really there aren't any many places where you could carry. And I think most people after reading through the list would be a little worried that they might wander 
into a gun-free zone. I call it gun-free. That's what they are. They Politicians like to say sensitive area because it's a softer word, I guess. But they're really gun-free zones. They're It's the anti-gun politicians that are saying, we don't think you should carry a gun anywhere in the state of New Jersey. I think a good part of this law is going to be vacated or removed because it's going to be deemed unconstitutional. And we'll see what happens January 5th. That's the day of the Zoom scheduled Zoom hearing in the Federal District Court of New Jersey regarding the one of the lawsuits. I hear there are many, but this is one in particular. And stay tuned for that video. I'll explain a little bit more about that lawsuit. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share it. Also consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. Take care. Stay safe.